Hello everyone, my name is Noemi Barajas and today we're going to be looking at my species presentation. We're going to be talking about the pelt-throated sloth and the reason I chose this animal specifically is because I wanted to learn more about it as it's one of my favorite animals and I really enjoy learning about them. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Once again, my name is Noemi Barajas and thank you so much for watching this video. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing is I'm going to be talking about these points here on the first slide, which is the natural history. And natural history revolves around the habitat, the growth of the sloth, and the behavior of the sloth. Um, the next one is going to be ecological role on Earth. We're going to look into the food web, relationship with other animals, and changes to the environment that they bring. Lastly, it's human roles, which is mostly talking about us. Can this animal be domesticated? Um, has it been hunted? If so, why? Things like that and other human concerns that we might bring towards this species. So we're going to go ahead and talk about sloth species. This is the first kind of background information. So sloths spend most of their lives in the tropical rainforest, of course. They live, sleep, and eat on top of really high trees in the rainforest. Of course, we will get into everything that they do, such as their behavior and things that I said before in the last slide. Um, so, of course, we're going to just get into the species of sloths and kind of get a little bit more understanding. So there are two different types of sloths. There's the two-toed and the three-toed, and in total, that makes six species. I have just a couple listed here. Um, there's the pygmy three-toed sloth, uh, the linear two-toed sloth, and the Hoffman two-toed sloth. But in this presentation, we're going to be focusing on, drumroll please, the pell throated sloth. So, of course, we're just going to get into it. Um, these are kind of some easy pictures you can see, get an idea. Now we're going to be talking about natural history. Um, in natural history, I'm going to go over habitat, the growth, their behavior, and such like that. The first thing we're going to talk about is their habitat. Now, pill-throated sloths usually live in tropical forest areas, like I said before, in really high up trees. They can be found in northern South America, mostly in this area where the arrow is, which is such as like western Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, and the north of the Amazon River, and those areas, which is more... I guess a cli the climate is much more warmer and of course it's more there's more rain more rainforest and things like that so now that we have a little bit of where they live and we have a little bit more understanding of their habitat we're going to go into their growth so sloths do everything up high in the trees they sleep they eat there and they also mate so the sloths made mate high up in the trees and once the baby is born males do not partake in parental care so it's all up to the mom um, once the baby is born, they are fully furred already and with open eyes. This will happen around the beginning of dry seasons like March or April. The baby is then nurtured belly to belly for six months, so the mom will feed it. And an actually really interesting fact that I didn't put on here, sorry, is once the baby is getting fed by the mom, they actually start to eat after afterwards, whatever the mom, whatever the mom feeds the baby, whatever type of leaf. They will then start eating that leaf because that's what they were, you know, shown when they were first a baby. So then at four months, they begin to eat solid foods or in their cases, leaves. The young sloth has mastered, once the young sloth has mastered, sorry, to eat and digest its food, its mother will simply depart and they are now left to continue the cycle. Um, an interesting fact on the side here is that males are much smaller than females. Um, females grow up to 30 to 30 inches and the, they weigh a lot more than males do. Now we're going to move on to behavior. So pelthroses sloths are actually very solitary animals once again. Since they live up so high up there, they usually just focus on themselves. Um, they, can hang, they can hang securely while they sleep because of their claws. They look like hooks. So they just hook onto a tree and fall asleep. Um, it is estimated and seen that Actually, sloths spent about 18 hours each day asleep, and they move very slowly, of course. We've all heard how they move super slow, and it would take nearly a month for it to travel a single mile. So that's pretty darn slow. Um, they sometimes get off of the trees to go to the restroom or drink water or anything like that. They usually come down, and they, act, they can actually stand on their feet, but they can't walk on them. Lastly is behavior. So sloth's color helps them camouflage, protecting them from predators. So as we can see, they're very green, very brown. They can hide in the trees a little bit better to protect, to protect them among, you know, animals that are trying to eat them. Uh, one of the most 
I would say threat to them is jaguars, mostly because they can climb on trees. Um, so the Peltherless sloth also communicates to other sloths using a bird-like whistle call. Um, and despite their lives, their lifestyle up in the trees, they're actually really good swimmers. Next, we're going to be talking about ecological role on Earth. We're just kind of we're just kind of be going over um, the food web relationship with animals and changes to the environment, like I said before. So let's get into it. Now, the food web, ev of course, every animal lives in a food web. And without them, or if something would happen to them, the whole food web would just crash, right? So the peltodus sloth are actually herbivores, which we all know they eat um, many different types of leaves that they can find in the rainforest. Some are the Cecropia, Saba, Elizabeth, and Hiva trees. Um, the picture actually at the bottom here, I kind of tried to do my own food web chain. Um, the bottom here is a is actually a saba tree, and the leaves are really pretty, I would say. <laughs> um, the three-toed sloth in its remote habitat rarely has the chance to affect human life, but it is food for jaguar snakes and harpy eagles. So I would say the food web goes from leaves to the sloth, and then of course the jaguar then eats the sloth, or the eagle, either way, you know. But once again, I would say that jaguars are the biggest threat. Next, we're going to be talking about relationship with other animals. And believe it or not, sloths have a really unique relationship with algae and moths. These moths are known as sloth moths because they, well, they live in, they live on sloths. Um, this relationship is known as a mutualistic ectosymbiotic relationship, meaning that they both benefit from each other. The fungi, algae, and moths have somewhere to live, while the sloth uses the green and brown color of these moths and algae to camouflage as we can see on the picture that i included on the bottom it's a little sloth and we can see it's fur is a little bit of green that way it can hide it can hide better in trees for predators that are trying to that usually focus on their eyesight or hunters that focus on their eyesight they're of course they're going to try to be looking around the trees and they're gonna, they're not going to be really able to spot the sloth because it's so camouflaged into the trees um so yeah now, moving on to, let's talk a little bit more of these moths. I, of course, included a picture, and they're very tiny, but um, I try to make it big so you can see them. So, in the sloth's fur, it is recorded for many species of moths to coexist. There's a total of six different species, and they actually can live together on as, on a sloth together. Um, so, when looking at a pelt or a sloth, these moths, there's an, there's an average about to be 120 living in one sloth. So that's a lot of moths. Um, changes to environment. I would say that the only change to environment that could cause harm to these sloths are deforestation, natural disaster, and once again, it would mess up the food web and trees and anything like that. Um, so yeah, and then actually a little bit more on, on moths, on the sloth moths, is that when the sloth comes down to use the restroom, um, the moths on the sloth will then eat the you know the what was digested and will create their larvae or their vape or their babies and they'll leave them on the you know on the waste and once they go back the cycle continues the moth will grow and then pick a different sloth or on the same sloth and it's just a cycle that goes on and on and on um now we're going to be talking about humans role and of course the humans role is kind of like the concern on humans um, of course, once again, is a sloth domesticated? Can I buy one? Can I have one as a pet? So we're going to, of course, talk about that and let's get into it. So sloths need to live in tree in order for it to have a successful life. We've seen how much it impacts them. They, of course, eat there, they sleep there, and they mate. So it's crucial that these animals stay in these trees. But, and because of that, many sloths don't do well in captivity. And of course, with the rapid cutting and decreasing of trees in the rainforest, and it's, this is mostly because of lumber companies who need the lumber and they just cut down the trees but never regrow any, which is super, super bad for these sloths because it's their home and they need the trees, obviously. So that is kind of one of the sad parts is deforestation. Uh, there's a lot of farmers and miners that are just wiping out those trees and not thinking of the habitat of sloths and the home that these trees are too. So... Our role as humans is we need to protect these sloths from hunters as well. So not only do we need to help them from deforestation, but hunters. A lot of hunters um, actually hunt sloths only for their claws, which is really sad. And they just resell them and they do all that other bad stuff. 
And us as humans, we need to protect them from deforestation and as well as the hunting, because without the sloths, the food web will be messed up and the forest environment would fail. So once again, if we kind of like look into the food web and we, we kind of talk a little bit more, um, without s trees, there's no sloth and without sloth, there's no moths. So sloth moths would be completely wiped out. Um, jaguars would have to then consider a different type of food, which will mess up, let's say the jaguar eats sloths without sloths they're going to start eating birds and let's say snakes eat birds so now snakes and jaguars are going to be fighting for the bird and it's just going to go super crazy and it's going to be super hard for these two animals to coexist with each other so therefore it is super important that we need to look into it more and take care of these sloths lastly this is just the works cited page if you want to look into a little bit more here's a little bit these are all the stuff that i use so if you would like to um know a little bit more feel free to um, email me with any questions or anything like that. Once again, my name is Ami Barajas. Thank you so much for watching, and I would love to hear your questions or concerns or anything like that. Thank you so much.